Let's take today and talk about senior tech interviewing, you know, things I look for, what I'm really paying attention to, the questions I'm going to ask, and how you could expect an interview like that to go with me. I don't do it the way a lot of people do, but I'm also evaluating on more than just your skill set. You know, senior tech to me means more than just somebody who can fix stuff. By the way, if you're noticing the, the, the beard looks a little different, yeah, I'm kind of doing a reset on that whole thing. Uh, it just, it got in really bad shape, so kind of reset button. So I'm going to start with just asking some basic questions on what it is you're actually comfortable with, what it is you're used to working on. You know, what do you consider part of your just daily stuff? What do you specialize in? And there's a handful of things I'm trying to pay attention to. One of the big things I'm really looking for is what kind of passions do you have? What are you really interested in doing in this trade? Because there's a lot of niches, there's a lot of things you can do. So what is it that you actually like? Uh, because that's going to help me determine how I can fit you into the team that I have, how I can best utilize the skills that you've built for yourself. You know, that's one of the things that I'm really looking for is I, I, I want to utilize your strengths to your best of ability because I think if I can do that as a leader, then I'm really going to help you come alongside our team to where we can all be better at that stage. and. We get the most out of the relationship. It also gives me a place where once I start to see where your strengths are, I wanna start pushing and challenging those strengths. It helps generate a spot to really test your pride. I really wanna understand, you know, what is your pride level? How, how far are you gonna push that? And are you capable and are you willing to acknowledge your weaknesses and where you uh, fail or fault or where you just don't know, that's the biggest thing. Really prideful people, it's almost impossible for some of them in the worst cases to admit any kind of fault at all. Something I've learned is just a personal note is that some people just come from different cultures and I've had to learn to factor that in. You know, here in Texas, you know, we're not very vocal or boastful or we don't do a lot of that kind of stuff. And so uh, I found that like people from West Coast, you know, especially uh, those from California and I've seen it from people from like uh, New York and such that it is more of a standard that they're going to try to justify their experience their background and they're going to tell you about all the things that they can do and, and it can come off very arrogant up front and I've had to build a filter that's not something I understood for a long time given the culture that I'm used to in a senior level you know you're setting an example in a company and you are the face of the team as the head, as the top guy, at however your company classifies what a senior technician is. It doesn't matter the tech two, tech three, tech 10, I don't care. Senior tech is a senior tech. Just wanna take a second to thank today's sponsor, Field Pulse, for taking care of this video. So Field Pulse offers a complete set of tools to help you really customize to your needs on managing your projects and taking care of your field. Really makes the scheduling process easier and really helps streamline your job tracking. Also wanna let you know they have a special going for April. You have till the 30th to sign up for this for three months free plus two Field Pulse plugins on your annual plan. If you wanna take advantage of that promo, link is in the description. I really want to thank Phil Pulse for all their support and really putting a lot of effort into taking care of this channel. They've been a great partner. Stopped here in Kings today for lunch, but you know, I'm going to take that into really trying to get a base knowledge as to uh, making sure you actually understand the basics of the equipment you say you're really good at. You know, I really want to verify that you can speak confidently about them in a general sense, not even getting into specifics and how well you can speak to that you know, out the gate really identifies your confidence level and just how deep your training is at the end of the day. But in that process, you know, if, if you can't speak confidently about what it is you say you're really good at, then that's going to draw a lot of questions as to just how deep are you really about that specific thing. And it's okay not to understand something or know, but that's where that honest conversation comes in and where the humility, the humility has to play its part. Anyway, yes, how well you can actually speak confidently towards a specific equipment. I don't care whether it's chiller side, you know, because I don't think you have to have chiller side in order to be a good senior technician. But let's say you're a, a, a really high-end RTU guy or 
you're really good with just hydronics in general. You do really good with mechanical. You know, there's a lot of senior level skills that are outside of just the chiller realm. But you better be pretty fluent in those things if you're gonna if you're gonna consider yourself that level of technician. So once we get past the basic fundamentals, I'm gonna really start pressing you on your ability to just really talk about the top the like individual specific things, you know, and really start getting into the nitty gritty. So let's say you do say you've got some heavy chiller background. Okay, well tell me about an IGV. What does that do? Tell me how the drive is going to impact the system operation and the staging and how does the PRV assembly and the VSD assembly function together? What is your oil system doing and what are some basic troubleshoots you could have to pay attention to when you're going through something like that? And I am going to have an expectation for you to be able to confidently answer that or tell me you don't know. Because it's okay not to know things and it's okay to just be wrong at times. and. What I really want to do is I just want you to be honest about it and I want you to acknowledge where you're at because I've actually gone through several interviews with guys who genuinely believe that they are a senior level guy. They are really just that knowledgeable and that experienced and then we sometimes don't get that far into the conversation before they realize or before I realized talking to them that, you know, there's quite a few major skills and major topics here that you're not, you're not adequate enough on. You don't know enough about, and I really need you, I, I need you to know these things. There are certain things that, you know, I'm going to be looking to you to help lead and guide a team. You know, there's a lot of companies, I don't know about everywhere, but it's not uncommon around me that companies will use senior guys and they will assign a certain number of junior techs to a senior. And so one senior may have five to 10 guys that he helps kind of oversee in a way, not literally supervise, but guide and mentor. And when they have problems and they need a senior on site, that senior is gonna be the one that goes to them. Uh, I specifically don't do that with my setup and, and my company, but that is a standard in the industry is that you're going to be looked at as a leading voice to help guide others. So you should have a deep enough understanding of those things that you can actually accomplish that fact. And if you can't, then that really brings a question to your ability as a senior. So as we start getting into the conversation of more specifics and having you really try to start to explain some of those things, I'm really gonna start pushing you on how how much you really know in terms of act, or what, not how much you know, that's the wrong way. What I mean is, what is your personal training? What is your preferences? So for example, uh, if you claim you have a lot of really good VSD or VFD experience and you're good with drives and, and that's say a specialty of yours, okay, what is your personal preference on how you set your parameters and what you want to do and, and what numbers it is that you're going to stick with and when you're doing that because you know I, i'm just i'm curious it doesn't mean that there's a right and wrong i have my preference and everybody has theirs but what is yours and you ought to be able to explain that to me or uh if you got a, a burnout let's say it's a burnout on a intellipack or let's say it's a burnout on a chiller doesn't matter what the burnout's really on what is your process what do you do for a burnout on a system? That, that's something that you really ought to have. I mean, heck, that's actually a question I pull on my Tech 2 interviews. Like a Tech 2, a, a really good, solid, experienced guy who's a, who's a journeyman, basically. That's the way I would view that uh, in a more maybe standard term. They ought to know what to do for a burnout, the proper procedures. Something that really stands out to me in that conversation is what training do you have and what practices do you have? I do find that there are quite a few people who are really heavily bought into some, I guess, old school practices and that's all they really care about and they're not interested in learning some of the more modern stuff and you know and the burnouts is a prime example of that you know they just oh just purge with nitrogen it's good enough yeah it's not but anyway um it just if if there's too many bad habits there that's going to create a problem and for me as a company like that's going to be something i'm going to have to pay for that because I know what those practices lead to. There's a reason why we don't do those practices anymore. And now I've got to take steps to correct that on my side. And you know, if, if I let you go out there and do it the wrong way, or if you're not willing to do it the right way, that's where we're gonna have a major conflict. And there's a whole piece of this that I haven't really gotten into is, you know, you do deserve respect as a senior. And your time, your energy, your efforts you've invested into this industry, that deserves a lot of respect it, it does and 
part of my drive in these questions, you know, I don't present them the way I'm explaining to it now. I am trying to convey a seriousness, but I do, as, a, as, as somebody that interviews that type of position, I approach that conversation very uh, respectfully in my opinion. But I do want to respectfully ask these questions in a way to where you're not going to feel like I'm trying to call you out because that's not what these things are purposed to do. It's not a means of calling out. It's a means of trying to verify, are you at the, what, what my expectations are for what you claim and what I'm expecting of you. Because if I bring you in the team and you're not what I expect, you're not capable of doing what I expected you to do, well, that's going to create a problem for us on a management scale because now I, I can't rely on you in that way. So and that's that's really what I'm trying to do. I want you to be successful, but I also I got to make sure that you are what you're supposed to be. And my version of what that means and your version of what that means might be different. But for those of you who have no idea any of the, or how to get to this stage, who aren't in that position, these are some things that I'm really going to be looking for. And if you want to come to me and justify, hey, I'm worth this role. I am this level of person. Uh, okay, well, you should be able to answer these questions in. And if you can't, then we, we're probably going to have a conversation of, are you really there? Because I, I've, I've had to do that. I've had to have guys come in. I'm a senior guy. I know all this stuff. I'm, I'm sorry, but you didn't. You do a small cold brew, please, with light ice. Appreciate it. You know, I started to cut back and actually get my coffee under control and do it a lot better and I just, I don't know, my life's gotten stressful, it's gotten crazy, kids, life, work, anyway, I've, uh, how about we call it a relapse? I'm on, uh, I'm on a relapse right now pretty hard and I'm just gonna own it. It is what it is. So let's say we've gone through the whole process and you've done a great job. It's been a wonderful interview and I really want to continue to move forward. You know, I, I'm going to want to know what are your goals? What do you have planned? What do you want to do for yourself? What's next for you in your career? Uh, what are you, what are your interests as a as from a career perspective? Uh, and how can I play a role in that? You know, that's something to really think about is it is a partnership, especially when you get to that level and you when you move companies, it's a big deal as a senior technician. You know, as, as a junior tech, it's not that y'all don't matter. It's, it's not that at all, but there is, it, 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 the company fills it in a different way. And so as a company, you do end up engaging on a deeper level with your senior people because they are a face and a voice for the company in ways that junior level techs just don't, they haven't matured enough in their career and in the industry to play that same type of role. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. That just is what it is. Anyway, I don't, I don't need to justify it. I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, you need to think about how the company can also help assist you with what you're trying to achieve and what you want. For me, you know, I've, I've, I'm happy with where I've gotten. I know there's a lot of technical skills. There's a lot of things. There's a ton of refinement I can do, and I'm trying to work on some of those things. But the biggest passion I have for my career right now is really helping others, helping bring others up, develop guys, and see this trade grow in a much bigger way. It's, a, it's just, I, I've really got a strong fire for that, and I have for a little while now. So a lot of my efforts go into that, and that's what led me into getting into management to begin with, is I want to see this trade do better, and I want to see people thrive in this trade. So what is yours? You got to think about that. What is your goals? What's your next steps? Anyway, I'll close it out here. Weather's barely improved whatsoever throughout the day, so it's just, it's just a nasty, terrible day no matter what you do. But that's okay, they're gonna be like this sometimes. Hopefully we got a better day tomorrow. Supposedly we should get some sun. I hope so, I would look forward to that. But I appreciate it guys. I, I'm very thankful you stuck around and just listen, I mean, listen to me talk, listen to me rant. I'm, I'm full of ideas, I'm full of thoughts, I'm full of opinions and full of crap at the end of the day. Like it is what it is, full of crap. So yeah, if y'all need any tech support, need any training, stuff like that, feel free, check it out on the website. It's open to you. Don't forget about True Tech Tools. 8% off with uh, HVAC Time as your code. They'll get you taken care of. Really appreciate Bill Spohn and the guys over there. They do they do a good a good work, provide a good service for us field guys. Uh, other than that, I'll catch y'all around. I hope you enjoyed the vlog-ish thing. I don't even, honestly, I'm not, I'm not completely sure I'd even call this a vlog, but 
It's the closest thing I got today, so we're just gonna go with it. 